What up guys, Mariam here. Welcome to my channel or welcome back. In today's video, I'm doing another foundation review featuring the new Bobbi Brown Skin Long Wear Fluid Powder Foundation, which is a liquid to powder foundation formula that's supposed to be your new best friend for the summertime, especially if you're oily skin. If you have oily skin like me, even if you don't have oily skin like me, watch until the end for that wear test and for that verdict. That said, remember to subscribe, hit that notification bell so you can see all of my Wednesdays and Sundays Sunday's videos. And now let's get to it. Bobbi Brown Fluid Powder Foundation Review Plus Wear Test. And also this very cute monochromatic orangey summery look. You're welcome. All right, you guys. So we have our new all set and ready to go. First ever two in one liquid to powder foundation from Bobbi Brown. This is apparently a new formula that's been out on the market for about two to three months. I just got it in the mail and it's actually my first time talking about Bobbi Brown on my YouTube channel. I don't think I've ever reviewed any of their products before but it's such a popular brand, such an old school brand from back in the 90s that I remember my mom using. So I'm kind of excited to play around with this product and see if it's good or not. All right, so about this foundation, 1.4 fluid ounce squeezy tube, skin long wear fluid powder foundation with broad spectrum SPF. New formula starts as a liquid foundation and sets almost instantly into a soft matte powder finish. Lightweight sweat resistant formula controls oil and stays color true, even in warm weather. So this sounds like the perfect summer foundation for my skin type, which is oily AF. So I'm really excited. I hope this works out. I really do love liquid to powder formula foundations. I do feel like they work a little bit better for people with my skin type. And it also just looks really pretty on the skin and not super cakey, it just works. Here we have N042 beige. I'm assuming N stands for neutral. Let's try that out. Very, very liquidy. Ooh, this is very light, but I do like the fact that their neutral leans a little bit more olive. Let's try the C36 Cool Sand. Okay, clearly this is not a match. This is a very, very cool pink undertone. Very light for me, setting that aside. And the last one that we have here is W46 Warm Beige. Huh, still a little too light for my liking. And I honestly like the neutral undertone a little bit better than the warm undertone, which leans very, very orange in my monitor and also in my mirror here in person. Whereas this one did a pretty good job of blending in. So I guess I'm gonna go for the neutral. Maybe I'll add a little bit of warmth just depending on how it all blends out. But for now, these are the swatches. Let me make my hair a little cuter for some thumbnail faces. New summer fave, is this you? Hmm. So let me go ahead and remove these swatches from my face. Oh, wow, this does take a little bit of effort to remove because it does in fact set to a very solid powdery finish. So I'm thinking I'm probably not gonna do the powder under foundation method for today's video and for this type of foundation. Instead, I'm thinking I'm just gonna apply primer to one side of the face and no primer to the other side of the face just to see if that makes a difference for me. And of course, we'll do a wear test at the end and we'll compare both sides. Since I've been liking this Too Faced Primed and Poreless Primer. This is the one that I'm gonna go for today. I am going to designate this side of my face as the primer side. Just a little bit of primer, can't hurt. Literally, there is a border between my primer and no primer on my forehead. Do you see that? It's so funny. All right, so N42 is the one that I'm gonna test out. Shake well before applying. Find that shaking is very important for a lot of the liquidy or liquid to powder formulas. I also like to kind of like just squeeze the squeezy tube around. I feel like that helps with the shake and with an even distribution of pigments. It Cosmetics Love is the foundation brush. I know it looks dirty, but I've only used it once or twice, so it's not dirty. I'm gonna apply a little bit of that to my forehead. <laughs> Why do I ruin every single shirt that I own with a foundation? Why, and this is such a cute shirt. <laughs> All right, so because this is a foundation that sets fairly quickly, I'm going to only apply it to one part of my face first. Yeah, they weren't lying. This definitely does set fast. This first layer looks pretty sheer to me. Let's see what happens with the second layer. Second layer offers a pinch more coverage, so it's definitely buildable. I like that it's refining my pores. It looks super duper matte. So far, so good. A little bit more on my forehead. Dang, I wish this was my color. We are gonna have to 
really bronze up today. I'm finding that the primer side applies a lot easier than the non-primer side. I guess there's a little bit more of a slip, whereas on this side of the face, it's feeling a little bit like an SPF, in the sense that you really have to put in an effort to blend it out. But I like how it's mattifying. I like how it makes my skin look very, very even, but still very natural. I'm gonna add one more layer. And a pinch more over here. Okay, so upon this first initial application, I'm finding that it is a little bit easier to apply the foundation on top of primer. It's also pretty easy to use stippling motions to just pack it on. Definitely does dry very, very quickly, but it dries to a very, very pretty and natural looking finish. This is definitely a buildable coverage foundation. Sheer to medium, I would say, not medium to full. And it is indeed cell setting. All right, so now I'm gonna apply the rest of my face, starting with concealer, Pat McGrath LM10. Okay, so I'm noticing that this concealer is a lot creamier than this powder. So it's causing a bit of a problem here where I'm overlapping the two. I think what's happening is that this concealer is actually making the foundation lift a little. So what I'm gonna do is just gently buff it out and then also kind of stipple in the remainder. Whew, I don't recognize myself in that monitor. I look ghostly. And then in comparison to my neck and my hands, whew, girl. Not to worry, we'll make it work. I'm gonna use my Pat McGrath under eye setting powder just to set the under eye and also help a bit with that blending over here. Okay, let's bronze up. Could use my NARS Laguna bronzer. Big old Morphe brush. And I'm going to generously start by tapping that onto my forehead. Wow, another nice thing about this foundation is that it really takes powder well. So keep that in mind. I wouldn't necessarily use a cream blush or a cream highlighter on top of this foundation. As you saw in the case of the concealer, the two formulas aren't exactly compatible. So once the foundation sets to a powder, it's best to just stick to powder products. So in terms of concealer, I'm actually probably gonna try to do my concealer first before foundation and then apply this liquid to powder on top. Bronze up the jawline, feel like it needs it. You know what? Now that I've done all that, I'm looking a little bit more like myself. I'm gonna take a bit of this Beauty Bakery flower powder and just clean up some of these areas here. So now I'm just gonna extend my brow just a pinch. Next, let's do blush, Lunar Beauty Cheek Palette, Moon Prism Blush. Let's go for Twilight. You know what, let's take that bit across the nose, like that, just for a bit of a sun-kissed effect. For the highlighter, Laura Lee Los Angeles. Let's go for this shade here called Diamonds. Bit of a glaze here. Love that. How about this pretty lippy campfire from Dose of Colors? Such a nice color, kind of like a um, coral brick. A little wash of this color here from the Stupid Love palette. This shade is called Enemy. Just a little wash right there, nothing too serious. Big, clean, fluffy brush, blend all that out. And then how about a little something darker, maybe Stupid Love in the corner? Yeah. I don't know about you guys, but I'm all about the wearable looks lately. Just want things to be easy, modern, not outdated. You could still play around with color and you could still be bold while maintaining that wearability. It's cute, kind of fall-esque, not so summery. And go back to the Moon Prism palette, pick up a bit of this shade just on my finger, plop that onto my lid, or a little soft, subtle, Shimmer and shine. Next up, lashes. Curl on the tops and the bottom. For my top lashes and keeping strictly on the outer portion of the lashes, I'm gonna use the new Marc Jacobs At Lashed Mascara, which is not a waterproof formula, but it's a really good formula. Although it smudges on me, I found a way to wear it without getting it to smudge. So basically, I just apply it to the outer half of my top lashes, I fan it out, and I do not go past this line right here because in the inner corner is where my lashes get caught in my epicanthic fold, causing the mascara to smear and smudge. Also now I'm gonna apply it to my lower lash line because that's another area where for some reason my mascara is into smudge. And this is strictly due to my eye shape because my eye is flatter, because I have a little fold in my inner corner where lashes can get trapped, especially when I'm smiling or laughing. So this is just something that happens to me. If you are a person who can wear non-waterproof formula mascaras, then you will like this mascara a lot. The lower lash line and for the inner corner, I'm just gonna use a waterproof formula. Pixie mascara, that is nice, 
but I will admit it's not as dramatic as some of these non-waterproof formulas like the Huda Beauty and like this Marc Jacobs at Lash. Next thing I'm gonna do is just go in with a little pointy brush and clean up that lower lash line area. In case you have any mascara remaining, you can just smudge that out or pick that up. Just add a little bit of color. Pinch more mascara on the outer lashes. And here is the final face. Okay, let's judge it real quick. So going back to Bobbi Brown's liquid to powder foundation, I gotta say, I really, really like the formula. Although the color doesn't match my skin tone, I think I was able to make it work with the bronzer. Overall, I like how matte it is, yet it doesn't seem to be amplifying my pores or any of my breakouts. The coverage seems to be working for my current skin situation, which is fairly good. But I imagine if I was breaking out any more than I am right now, out, it would be harder for me to cover that up. This is definitely one of those foundations that's better for your better skin days. Looking at my monitor, my skin looks really, really, really good, although still kind of pale. I still see some minor breakouts over here, but overall it looks healthy. It doesn't look oily. It doesn't look cakey and it looks really natural. So a really good finish for the summertime. Of course, we're going to see how it wears after a full full eight hour wear test and then we're gonna give our final verdict so let's cue in some of that good old time warping music right here and find out Oh, hey guys, wear test time. All right, so it's been probably like nine hours. I put this makeup on at around 1 p.m. It's now 10 p.m., I think. I've had a hell of a day. I've had some wine. I had my mom over for the first time in over three months. Ah, <sighs> felt amazing. Back to the makeup. This is what my face is looking like at the end of the day after a nine hour wear of Bobbi Brown Skin Long Wear Fluid Powder Foundation, SPF 20. This is what the sun with the primer looks like pretty darn flawless this is what the side without the primer looks like even better in my opinion honestly overall looking at my phone right now looking at the mirror at myself pleasantly surprised i don't see any pores i don't see any imperfections and don't really see any flaws being highlighted although i know they're there i'm really 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 impressed with this coverage. I'm also super impressed by how long wearing this foundation is. My skin looks really matte. And although you can definitely see a highlight right here, there's absolutely no oil slick, not on my forehead, not on my cheeks, not on my nose, nowhere. Bottom line is I need to get my shade in this foundation and I need to make this my new everyday foundation because it has proven itself to be a really, really solid foundation for the summertime if your skin is on the good side. Honestly, I'm gonna have to give it a nine, you guys. It's been a day and it's also super hot outside and I don't think I've ever looked better. I'm shocked, but the wear test don't lie. With that said, I am going to zoom on out and uh, I'll see you guys in my next video. Check out some of my other videos right here. I love you guys so much and I will see you very soon. Mwah!